I have a huge psych test coming up, and I don't know what sensory, short-term, and long-term memory are. What am I gonna do? No need to fear, young psych student. I will help you. Who said that? Me. Who? Me. Who? Me. Alan Badalay. Wait, where are you? I don't see you. That's because I'm the ghost of Alan Badalay. Oh, okay. Wait a second. Isn't Alan Badalay still alive? Ooh, spooky. Wait, what? Never mind that. I will help you learn sensory, short-term, and long-term memory. Sweet! First, let's go over sensory memory. Sensory memory is all about the here and now. It is your mind's ability to preserve information on its original form for a fraction of a second. A key example of this is after image. This is where a visual pattern lingers for a brief moment after the stimulation is over. Okay, so is sensory memory only with sight? No. As a matter of fact, sensory memory can occur through sight, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touching. Wow! Sight, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touching? Yep. Now that you've got that down, let's move on to long-term memory. Alright. Sounds swell. Long-term memory is your brain's unlimited capacity to hold information over various extended periods of time. Wait. How various? Like anywhere from minutes all the way to years. Whoa! That's pretty various. Yeah, it is. Now, as I was saying, there are several ways to commit information to the long term. The first way is through chunking. This is where you group information together to remember it in large capacities. The second way is through rehearsal distribute, distributed over time, or spacing. Okay, I think I really get these long-term memory key terms, but are there any major psychologists I should know about? Actually, there are. Herman Ebbinghaus made great contributions to memory through his forgetting curve. This curve shows that as time goes on, retention decreases exponentially. In other words, when you first learn something, you can immediately remember it. But as time goes on, you begin to forget. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yes, it does make a lot of sense. So, what was that third type of memory I needed to know about? Short-term memory? Oh yeah, that one! Well, short-term memory allows you to hold information for about 10 to 20 seconds. For example, have you ever heard something and tried to remember it by mindlessly repeating it to yourself? Yeah, that's how I always study for my big exams. Mindless repetition. Whoa there, sonny boy. You better hold your horses. I don't have any horses. That was a figure of speech. I'll have to teach you about that some other day. But anyways, this mindless repetition is called maintenance rehearsal and it will only allow you to keep information in your short-term memory and not transfer it to the long term. That explains why I keep failing all those tests. Yes, that would explain it. So, do you have any catchy slogans that I can use to help me remember short term memory? Yes, and I would tell it to you, but you'll just forget it in about 20 seconds. Oh, okay. Well, I think I'm really starting to catch on to all this information anyways. Well, there is one more thing. Really? What's that? I hypothesize you can only remember four things, plus or minus one, in your short-term memory stage. No, no! This man's a fraud! Whoa! Who said that? This is my arch nemesis. I am the ghost of George Miller. Oh, okay. Wait a second. Isn't George Miller still alive, too? Ooh, spooky! Wait, what? Never mind that. I'm going to teach you about Miller's Magic 7. Did you name that after yourself? Uh...
Yes. So egocentric. Anyways, this theory states that you can actually remember seven things plus or minus two in your short-term memory. Ooh! You know what? This has been one of the weirdest experiences of my life. But at least I know what sensory, short-term, and long-term memory are.